What's up you guys, Zoe here for OneGlanceTrader.com and in this video I'll be giving you an introduction into the world of options trading and more in particular is how you can generate an income with options trading. Now there will be a number of option trading videos going forward on this channel and I polled you guys uh, about a month ago and about three quarters of you wanted to see option trading videos and I was hesitant at first on whether to talk about options trading but I've been doing options trading now since December last year and I'll be honest with you in terms of from a monetary perspective between forex trading and options trading I am making more money options trading than I am in forex trading and that is just a full disclaimer and that is why I wanted to share this with you um, and share options trading because you know I'm really enjoying it it's really exciting it's completely different to forex trading to a certain extent but a lot of those technical tools and technical indicators and technical analysis that I've been teaching on this channel are all still relevant when it comes to options trading and what I wanted to do inside this particular video is just to give you guys an overview of options if you're brand new and because options can be complicated to get your head round and that's why there'll be a number of videos following this one um, talking about options trading I will still be doing Forex videos still going through my journeys indicators for MT4 and trading view and all that kind of good stuff as well but what I want to do is open this up to people that are Forex traders or are brand new to my channel uh, around options trading so like I said, there's a lot to come in this space and you know, I'm going to really show you guys some really interesting things that you guys can do with uh, options trading. So let's get into this particular video. So there are two types of options. You can either buy an option or you can sell an option. And similar to buying and selling in Forex, buying and selling stocks, it all works in kind of a, a, a similar way. Now, an option is basically a derivative of an underlying commodity stock or an, or an asset of some sort and when you buy an option there are two types of strategies when you when you buy an option so you can either buy a call option which basically is a bullish strategy which basically saying is I think that the price of this stock for example will go up and then you've also got put options you can buy a put options which is a bearish strategy where you can say that I think the price of this stock will go down so instead of buying the stock or the index you can um, you can buy a, a call option whether you're bearish or bullish on that particular asset class so just to make clear that there are two things you can buy a call option if you think that the asset is going to go up or you can buy a put option if you think the asset is going to go down so what does a buy a call option actually mean so the definition is uh, a buy call option is an option that offers the right but not the obligation to buy an underlying asset for a predetermined strike price at a certain date now that might sound quite complicated so I've just broken it down into a very simplistic uh, example using Apple stock so let's just say that the current price of Apple is hundred and thirty dollars and you think that over the next few weeks you think Apple is, is going to go up you don't know by how much you just think it's just going to go up over the next few weeks maybe you think they've got earnings around the corner and you think that uh, the price is going to go up or there's another catalyst they're about to release the new version of the iPhone or the iPad and you think that historically the share price has gone up you know a few weeks before the release so therefore you think that the price is going to go up so what you can do is you can buy stock of Apple at $130 and hold it and um, wait for the price to go up or what you could do you could buy a call option so what you can do is you can buy one Apple call option and a call option allows you to control a hundred shares of the underlying asset so you can do as many option contracts as you would like you can do one or you can do a, a thousand um, but we just go with the example of you want to buy a call um, so call option so 100 shares at a strike price of 130 um, expiring on the 9th of July 2021 
So what you're saying is, is by the 9th of July 2021, you expect Apple to be uh, uh, to uh, to to go higher than $130. Now, as I said, because we're talking about 100 shares, you could buy the shares outright at $130 each. So that's $13,000. Yeah, as, a, as, as an example, so you would put $13,000, you would hold Apple and then hopefully over time the price will go up and then you'll sell it at 135, 140, whatever it is you want to sell it at. But let's say you don't have $13,000. Uh, what you can do is buy the 130 strike call expiring on July the 9th and only pay two dollars forty per share but as we're talking is a hundred shares so for two hundred and forty dollars so you would pay the option seller which we'll go into in a second two hundred and forty dollars to own a hundred shares or control a hundred shares of apple at a strike price of 130. so what happens then um at that point so let's just say apple by July 9th, tanks to $110, earnings were poor or whatever the reason is. Your risk, as in money that you can potentially lose, is $240. That's the max risk. So instead of putting 13,000 down and Apple goes down to 120, you know, that is a $1,000 unrealized loss because you haven't sold the shares. Or you can just pay $240, uh, $240 as your max risk. And also you don't need to put that collateral up. So then let's just say then the other extreme is that Apple goes up to $140 around around July, July the 9th. What you can then do there is this is basically what it said. If we go back to the definition, allows you to the right but not the obligation to buy an underlying asset for a predetermined strike price at a certain date. So at any point in time, you can, what is called in the options world, exercise the option to buy 100 shares of Apple at $130. So if the price goes up to 140 on, let's say, the July the 7th, and you feel, okay, now I want to exercise my option because you can exercise your option anywhere from when you buy the call option all the way up to expiry uh, at uh, $130. So imagine then in, let's say, in by well, the 7th of July, the price is at 140 You exercise the option and then you buy 100 shares at $130. But the current trading price of Apple is 140 So therefore now you have got a $1,000 unrealized gain because you now purchased the price and you locked in your strike price inside the future. Now, and that's basically how uh, how options work. If you think you're bullish on a stock and you want to buy the stock, but you want to not put all that collateral in at that time in case it doesn't happen, you pay a small amount, i.e. $240, and then if price goes, if the price goes against you, worst case you can sell that option back so you can recoup some of your 240. Or what you can do is just let it expire worthless, as it's called in the uh, in the industry, and you lose 240 dollars. But your upside potential is massive because it's you know Apple could go to 300, 400 dollars. Uh, but if Apple drops to like 70 dollars, your max risk is always. $240 in this example. So this is the premium that you pay to buy a call option. So to the other side of the fence is to buy a put option. So it's exactly the same thing, but instead of buying an underlying asset, you're willing to sell an underlying asset. So let's just say you own 100 shares of Apple um, and the cost basis of Apple of all your shares is $100. So an Apple is currently trading at 130. So you bought 100 shares at $100 and now the price of Apple is $130. Now you're worried that over the next few weeks that you think Apple's going to go down, you know, for whatever reason, you know, the rumors that the new iPhone is pretty poor or there's rumors of whatever it may be. You're just worried that you think the price is going to tank all the way down back to 100 or potentially lower. So what you can do then is you can buy a put option. A lot of people buy put options for insurance for this particular example. So you can buy a put option 
at $125, expiring uh, July 9th, and pay $3 per share, so $300 um, in, uh, in in premium to the uh, to the option seller. So let's work out a scenario. So let's just say Apple um, stays at 130 or continues to go up. So therefore, you're not going to exercise that option because it's worth more than your strike price. So you'll let the option expire worthless and you'll lose $300. Let's just say now Apple goes down um, to $120, right? So you're still happy to keep Apple at 120. You don't have to exercise if it gets into your um, if it goes below your strike price in this example. You can still let the option expire worthless. You are in control of that option in terms of whether you want to exercise that option or let it expire worthless. And then let's just say then the price drops to 99 so even below your cost basis of 100 you can then exercise the option and as the definition states you are willing to sell an underlying asset at a predetermined price so you already have locked in 125 dollars and that's what you're paying your premium for is to lock a price point today for some point inside the future so again it might sound complicated at first and we'll go through lots of examples through through uh, other videos and um just to just to kind of put this across is when you buy a call or put option the buyer has to pay a premium to the option seller so this is your two two hundred and forty dollars for this call example and three hundred dollars for the put example now as an option buyer you can either exercise the option so willing to buy or sell your hundred shares um, at your predetermined strike price or you can just let it expire worthless in all cases you are going to lose the 240 the 240 dollars and the 300 dollars in the example you lose your premium but you're willing to do that for the upside gain or protection um, from a put option perspective and again that's what it says here is the risk the premium paid is fixed so you know what your risk is up front but you've got maximum upside or downside reward based on if you're buying a call option or if you're buying a put option so that is the fundamental basics of buying a put option and selling an option as with any transaction you need a buyer and you need a seller so in the in the uh, in the call example uh, we are it's a similar strategy where you are selling call options which is a bearish strategy because you think the price is um, because uh, you think the price is going to go down or you can sell put options which is a bullish strategy which you think the price is going to go up so i'm using the same example as i did in the previous slide of the person that was selling um uh, that was uh, that was uh, buying uh the um uh the the call option so let's just say now for example I own 100 shares of Apple with a cost basis of $120. The current price of Apple today is $130. Um, and I think Apple may go down uh, in price uh, over, uh, over, over the next few weeks. So what I can do is I can sell one Apple call option contract. So again, one call option for 100 shares at a strike price of 130 expiring July the 9th um, and I will get a credit into my account of $240 so this is the opposite to the um, I'll just go back this is the opposite to the to the to the buy cause where here you want to buy 100 shares potentially and on this side I'm willing to sell 100 shares so where, where, well, I, I think the price is going to go. Um, I think the price of of Apple is going to go down. Where the person that's buying the call option thinks the price of Apple is is, is going to go up. Now, in this particular example, there's three things that can happen. The first thing is is that the price of Apple can stay at uh, around um, $130, um, and um, uh, and if that happens, then um, then I will then lose that 100 shares. Um, I will sell my 100 shares at $130. The, 
the price of Apple could go up. If the price of Apple goes up, I still then have to sell my shares at $130. Or if the price of Apple stays below 130, then the option will expire worthless. The buyer could exercise their 130 strike price, but it's very unlikely that they would do that. And I'll, go, I'll cover that in uh, inside other videos. But whatever happens, um, I keep my $2.40 per share credit. And it's exactly the same on the other side that let's just say that the current price of Apple is 130. I think Apple's going to go up over the next few weeks. So what I do is I sell a put option uh, contract. So for 100 shares at a strike price of 125. So below the current price of Apple expiring July 9th and I will get $300 credit. So as soon as that trade gets executed and the buyer of the uh, the buyer of the uh, put option um, comes in and uh, takes that trade on the other side, I will instantly get $300 credit. Whereas in the previous example, that's $300 debit to the option buyer. And that will come to me. <clears throat> Again, three things can Apple happen. If the price stays at 130 or above, the option will expire worthless. And I keep the $300. And if the... Um, um, if the price ends at 125, I will then be forced and assigned the shares of 100 and, uh, at a strike price of $125, but I keep my $300 premium. Let's say Apple tanks to $90. Again, I I am I'll be more likely assigned, so therefore I will have to buy 100 shares at $125 even though the share price has dropped to 90. So I'll be holding an unrealized loss. And if I just go to that third point, where it's the opposite for option buyers, whereas my reward, i.e. the premium, is fixed, but I've got a maximum upside or downside risk. So in the selling put options, as I said, even though I've agreed and written a contract to sell, uh, to buy 100 shares of Apple at $125, if Apple tanks to 60, I still have to buy Apple at $125. And there are ways around this, and there is another, uh, there's other things as well that you can do, which I'll talk about in a second. But for option sellers, um, I can either be assigned the option. So if a buyer exercises their option, the seller will get assigned the option, or it can expire worthless, i.e., the buyer does not. Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Lost, lost my train of thought there. Um, does not uh, exercise their option. As an option seller, you get to keep the premium, whatever the outcome, and your reward or premium is fixed, again, with maximum upside or downside risk, which is why that there is a charge that sellers of options do. So I hope that makes sense. And again, like I said, watch the video a couple of times. And again, we'll be going through more and more examples. And I found this difficult to get my head around at first, but eventually it will just click and you'll and you'll understand the, uh, the kind of thought process. So do you think I buy options or sell options from in, uh, for income? And I won't leave you hanging too long. I actually sell options. So I am, all I do, and all I've been doing over the last six, seven months is selling options. And the reason why I sell options is because of the premium. So as I mentioned before, if you're selling options, the buyer has to give you a premium of the $240 and $300 in the example in the previous slide. That gets instantly paid to me for selling options. Well, I'm selling call options because I own 100, 100 shares or if I'm selling put options and I'm willing to buy 100 shares. And as I said, is I profit from the underlying stock going up, down, or sideways. So what does that even mean? So if we go back to ABC Limited, that's worth $100. If I sell a put option for $90, i.e. I'm willing to buy 100 shares of ABC Limited if the price... Um, goes uh, drops to 90 or below and i and i let's just say i get a hundred dollars in premium for doing that so i get a hundred dollars into my account 
And what I mean by up, down, or sideways, so if ABC Limited goes up in price before expiration, the option will expire worthless. I keep the $100. If the price stays at $100, um, the option will expire worthless because it's nowhere near my $90 uh, strike price. I will keep the $100. And even if um, the share price goes down, um, from $100, let's say it goes down to $91 uh, by the date of expiration, the option will still expire worthless and I'll keep the $100. So now you can see of how I can benefit from it going up, down or sideways. And whatever happens, I keep the premium. And the analogy that I keep hearing or that I kind of relate this to as is an insurance provider. So if you take car insurance, for example, you pay either a yearly or or monthly uh, premium uh, where where if you do get into an accident <clears throat> your insurance provider will pay out um, to go fix your car or give you money to give you money to a new car and that is basically what I'm doing here is I am willing uh, to take on all the risk either to buy or sell uh, shares in the company um, I'm willing to take all that risk if the price of the shares go all the way up or if the price of the shares go all the way down, but I want uh, a small piece of premium, whatever that may be, as a, uh, as a policy. So I keep, every time I sell options, I'm making premium and that premium accumulates over time and is making me some good consistent profits uh, as time goes on. So the question that I get often, I get asked a lot uh, or people that I've spoken to that I've been doing options is, yeah, but what is the risk of like, you know, the stock going to a higher or lower of your share price? So in the ABC Limited example, let's just say the price was 100. I set my strike price at 90 and before expiration, it dropped all the way down to $40, for example. So there's, so there's two answers to that. There is things that you can do, which is called rolling an option, which I'm not going to get into in this video, which can uh, avoid assignment. Um, the second thing is, is you want to sell options on stocks or or indexes that you don't mind holding that is the most important thing that i can't stress enough because if you look at things like amc GameStop, blackberry all these meme stocks i don't touch them from an options perspective the premium for the options is very lucrative and you can make a lot of money but what happens if amc drops below my strike price and I get stuck with 100 shares of AMC. I don't believe in AMC as a long-term stock to go all the way back up so I can sell my shares at a profit. So I don't I don't get involved in those kind of stuff. I do things on NEO, for example. I sell a lot of puts on NEO, Palantir. Um, I'm a big fan of Bitcoin, so Riot and Mara, all these types of stocks that I believe long term that they're going to go higher than the current price. So I'm willing to sell puts on them. And that leads me to nicely into the next step is the best way to sell options. In my personal opinion, it's called the wheel strategy. And in the next video, I'll go through the wheel strategy with a live example in a lot more detail. But just to give you a flavor of what's to come, it's a four step strategy where there's actually five steps. So step zero is find a stock or an index that you don't you don't mind holding if you get assigned. That's step that's step zero. So step one, you don't own any shares in this uh, in this stock. What you do is you sell the put on a stock you don't mind owning below the current price. So ABC Limited trading at hundred dollars, let's say today, you sell a put at 90, 85, 80, whatever price that you want. Um, at a expiration date you're, you're comfortable with and the goal is is to collect that premium so if the more than likely the option will expire worthless you do it again the next time and you keep doing that until eventually you will get assigned now I never thought if I sell puts way way below the current price like 30 40 percent below the price I would ever get assigned you will eventually get assigned. I promise you this, you will definitely get assigned. So back to step zero, do it on a stock that you like. So now you keep selling, selling puts, selling puts, selling puts, collect premium, $100 a week, $200 a week, whatever it may be. And then eventually you'll get assigned. So that's step two, you'll get assigned. 
Step three, you now own 100 shares of X stock, call it ABC Limited. So now what you do is then you sell call options of the stock that you own at your cost price. So let's say, for example, ABC Limited, $100 uh, current price. I sold a put at 90. It dropped to 80 and I got assigned. So I own 100 shares of ABC Limited at 90 um, and the current price is 80. So that's step two. Then you go on to step three, which is now I sell covered calls at my cost basis uh, that I got the shares, in this case, 80. So then I'm selling covered calls. So again, selling covered calls is I'm willing to sell 100 shares of ABC Limited as a strike price of 80 over X number of days, right? And if the stock price gets to that point at expiration, I will then uh, get assigned which is step four, and my 100 shares will get called away. And, there, and then that completes one cycle of the wheel. Sell puts, keep selling it, try not to get assigned, but when you get assigned, you sell calls at your cost basis, you're looking to get assigned effectively so you can get all your collateral back, and then you, then you do that. So I've been doing that now for six, seven months, and I, I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. It doesn't take a lot of my time. You know, it's... 10 15 minutes a day if that i do it all through the app on the phone yes i look at the stock and look at support and resistance and we'll go through all of that all of that stuff but that is basically the strategy now depending on when you're watching this uh, the next video in this series will be a live example of the wheel strategy um if you're have not if you're watching this when it on the day it gets released um, then there'll be another video on on here that will probably be something related to support and resistance which will be help you in good stead of when to on how to pick strike prices for the wheel strategy so i'll put that video on there but if we're later on in the future you will see the wheel strategy example where i'll go into the wheel with a live example all in more detail so you can kind of see this in reality so i really hope you enjoyed this video check out the next video on the screen now and i shall see you in a second